Hey guys, how's it going? It is Haley of Moth Child Cosplay and I'm going to start off this video with a bit of a bummer which is that um, I know that my last video, which I believe was two weeks ago, I said that next time I'd make a video my Zora armor would be done and it's not. Uh, I have been chipping away at this build. I am so close to being done. In fact, I am finishing this tomorrow. I am 100% confident in that assertion, like it's going to be done. All that's left on this build, all that's left are to glue in the LEDs, do the scout fly cage, and then do any last minute armor fixing. So in the past, I talked about using an Arduino Uno to power all these LEDs, and I was gonna program this complex thing, and blah, 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 and that's a bust. Basically what happened is I wanted to run three different branches of LEDs off of one single Arduino. In the past, the way that I soldered my LEDs to the Arduino was I soldered them directly to the five volt pin on the board. I didn't know any better and it worked at the time for my death knight because I was only running one strand off the Arduino so it was fine. This time around, because I was trying to run three different wires, what I ended up doing and you're probably going to cringe really, really hard when you hear this because like, I, I don't even know why I thought this was okay. So I soldered one individual wire to the five volt, the ground, and then the data pin of my choice. And then I spliced three wires into the one and there were like connecting pins. So that way, like everything was technically running off of one thing, but it, it just, it wasn't like, it, I fried the Arduino board doing this. I was warned by people, hey, don't do the thing that you're doing because you're gonna fry your board. And I was like, you know what? I know that you know what you're doing and you're giving me good advice, but um, I'm not gonna listen. So instead what I'm doing is I'm taking those tiny stagnant fairy lights and I'm gonna be gluing those behind the resin gems that I've installed in the armor. So, you know, it's gonna be looking effectively like this. And it's not the proper way to do it. Uh, it's maybe not the prettiest thing, but you know what, at this point, like, just because it's not my favorite method doesn't mean that it's not an effective method. And I've actually been like watching a lot more Alice and Tabitha videos. She uses a lot of unconventional methods in her builds and her videos. And even though I am an experienced cosplayer and I, I usually enter and, you know, do all these competition things, it's okay for me to take a step back and be like, wait, this doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to do it this way. This person wrote in a book 12 years ago. I can do this however the fuck I want. The same goes for you. <laughs> like just cause I say to do something a certain way doesn't mean I have to do it. It just, the same goes with everything. Like these gems, for example, I think I talked about these in a previous vlog, but technically you're supposed to be coloring these with a resin specific coloring agent. I just put artist zinc in there. Like that's, that's what it's happening. And they turned out well, they cured fine. And I also am really unconventional because <laughs> with these gems, and I actually, this is something that I, I do kind of wish that I had gone into the past and redone a little bit differently. So I sculpted and molded all of the gems here. Um, and for some reason, when I was sculpting these in my mind, I was like, oh, I can just sculpt the one big size gem. And then for the things that maybe need something that's a little bit smaller than that, I can just cast one for each of the slots, and then I can just take my Dremel and then shave it down and carve it into size. And it totally works, but it took a lot of time and it was messy and it... I really wish that I would have just bitten the bullet and gone ahead and sculpted individual sized gems instead of just doing the one for those parts. Moving on to the gems into something that's also a little unconventional. Not super, but I feel like people might kind of cringe when they hear about it because I... It's a weird thing and there's no real way to go about it, so people probably have different opinions, but the sleeves on this build. So these are my sleeves. I have one that is completely done. It kind of looks like a spiky purple pineapple. And then I have another one that is half done. I decided early on, I mentioned this before in the build video, that I wanted to use as much airy sort of fabric as I possibly could. I went with a lot of natural fibers on the top and then for the sleeves once i realized there were scales on here my first thought was to go and get a nice stiff and dense mesh this is crinoline mesh right here and sew the scales onto that while leaving solid at the top so this will allow me to have a good grip for the scales while also making it to where i can get like a nice 
Like, I can feel air on my arms. This is a build that I'm planning on wearing in the summer because I'm a fucking idiot and I like to make this kind of stuff in the middle of the summer. I don't really know why. Um, another thing that I am a little upset about with the sleeve is that... So this guy actually, and I know it looks really weird, once I pair it with the gauntlet, it makes a lot more sense. The sleeve is supposed to go inside the gauntlet, and there's no point in making it full length because that's dumb. Which is that. So it looks like it's going in, and it gives the look of like, oh yeah, this is a full arm of armor, and it's not. It's just right there. But this guy doesn't go up all the way over my shoulder as I had hoped. I'm super upset with that. I didn't take the time when I was making the sleeves to really sit down and measure it out. Um, I was in a rush trying to get these ready for me to go and take to work. But it's just one of those things where like, I know that if I had taken the time, it would look better. Moving on from the sleeves that are not completely finished and into the tabard, which in terms of the scales being sewn on, is completely done. All right, so actually I will admit, not all of the skills are sewn on the back piece, even with the armored collar on, you can still see some of the black fabric. So I need to go ahead and do like one or two last little top layers, which will not take long at all. So this back panel consists of 183 scales. All of these scales were hand cast by me, hand painted, hand sewn. This thing's a beast. All done using Smooth On Featherlight products. They are absolutely incredibly lightweight. I would guesstimate that this entire tabard weighs about 10 pounds. I'm not 100% sure. Once I have the whole build completed, I might look into getting a scale for the house and like weighing myself before putting the whole thing on and then weighing myself after because I have a feeling this whole build probably weighs about 30 pounds. The jacket thing is ridiculously heavy, like the underlayer. Uh, it's so, so intense, the whole thing is, but it's- And then, aside from the actual costume portions itself and a bit more into the prop work, I finished up my sword, so I can't even get this whole thing on, on screen. So there it is. This thing is five inches shorter than I am. If you're wondering, it does come apart. The handle is separate from this part. All I did was I used PVC. This is three quarters inch PVC for the handle itself. And then the sword itself has, I want to say either one half inch or a quarter inch PVC in the center running along the middle. But what connects the two is a PVC pipe connector. So all I have to do is take it and I made sure that I left a little bit extra right there. And I just plug it in and I can twist it a little bit if I need to, but yeah. This is it. I am super excited about how this came out. I hope you guys kind of understand what I meant by the Aztec-y sort of feel to it. And I am super happy with this paint job actually. I tend to not really like my paint jobs, but this one, I really feel like I killed it. Like, I, it's, it's just so cool. Yeah, I think that's really it for this video. I don't know, I'm trying to think of anything else that I might have done this week slash last week. Um, really genuinely hope you guys know that I am, I'm taking, like I, it probably sounds really dumb, but I do take this whole thing really seriously. I really care a lot about making sure that I'm being consistent and putting out good quality content for YouTube and even Patreon. I'm so incredibly grateful for all of my supporters on Patreon. Like, without them, this build wouldn't be happening. This is one of the most expensive builds I've ever done. Like, it's honestly, I don't want to think about it too much because it, it kind of like crushes my heart a little bit and makes my wallet cry. But because of the support that I've gotten on there, this type of stuff is, is able to be done. And I really, really, really hope that this is something that could continue to happen. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos and the content that I'm making. And I hope that if you're a Patreon, you're having a really, really good time looking at photos of my cat and all of the work in progress stuff. But anyway, I want to give, uh, obviously, a massive shout out to all of my patrons, but especially to Nicole, Robin, things shall get loud now, and CJ Rose Cosplay, you guys are wonderful, you are great. I'm very, very excited about like all of this. So uh, I will see you guys next week, and if I don't see you next week, maybe I'll see you at a convention with the long boy.